200 million children woke up this morning as slaves. 200 million. Many of these children, like this uh, boy who's photographed here, sleeping at one of our research sites in Ghana, joined tens of millions of adults as forced laborers in the fishing industry, the global fishing industry. And the fishing industry sits at the front line of the human response to environmental change. Every day, hundreds of thousands of boats head out from ports around the world and drop their net in the water in competition for a multi-billion dollar resource. A resource that provides 13% of all jobs on our planet also provides the primary source of animal protein for the two billion poorest people on our planet. But two-thirds of global fisheries are overexploited, unsustainable. Fishers today must travel farther, spend more money, take more time to achieve the same yields they had 10 or 20 years ago. This has created an increased demand for labor without increased revenue, and that's where, sadly, children and other forced laborers come in to address that need. Human trafficking is not the only consequence of our depleted fisheries. The decline of fish has resulted in increase in fish prices, which has given great global demand for alternative sources of wild meat. Those alternative sources range from the size of crickets to elephants and everything in between in what is now a multi-billion dollar global trade in wild meat. Our research, in collaboration with more than 200 informants at cities around the world, has tracked 300,000 of these wildlife items as they move through this dark network of a commodity chain to cities around the world. For example, we've tracked great apes and elephants arriving in markets in San Francisco and San Jose and on our own shores, among hundreds of other sites. This trade does not spare the iconic or endangered species in these systems, and in fact has dramatic impacts on some of the rarest species and most charismatic species on our planet. Our own research and a focus of our work has looked at how this trade has impacted large carnivores. Why large carnivores? Because large carnivores play critical roles in ecological systems. They do this by regulating many other species through their predation and also the fear they create. So what happens when you lose large carnivores like lions, wolves, or, or leopards and tigers in systems is that you see dramatic increases in the species they once contained and regulated. And these species become pests. Whether they're baboons or coyotes or raccoons or other species, for the urban dweller, for example, this woman in South Africa, the rise of baboons is more nuisance, though that's pretty terrifying, I think, uh, over a battle over groceries. But for millions of rural inhabitants, for example, this boy sitting on a termite mound in rural Mozambique, he's been taken out of school and is sitting on this mound to prevent baboon raids from the community's maize crops. In fact, he's one of millions of children who've been pulled from school in order to guard fields from baboons. So here you have a loss of education. The primary ladder out of poverty traps for millions in these rural communities is lost because of an ecological change in the environment around them. All of that may sound like a very dark global future and a dark Californian future because the same issues of resource scarcity, labor demand, environmental justice are occurring along our coasts, occurring in our Central Valley and occurring in our cities. But it doesn't have to be. Through this research, we're able to illuminate not only the social and political and other systems that impact our global environment, but very importantly through this research, we're able to understand how a changing environment impacts human society. And by doing that, we start to be able to identify levers of change. For example, we may recognize that police enforcement or other actions, maybe policy, are likely to be much less effective for getting this child slave out of a boat and into school than simply working towards more sustainable local fisheries. We may recognize that restoring large carnivores in many areas in Africa, for example, may have much more of an effect in getting that kid off of the termite mound and back into school than more popular development measures like school lunch programs, which really deal with symptoms rather than causes of a lot of these societal illnesses. And so this is what we're endeavoring to do here at UC Berkeley and in our lab and many other groups, and that is identify long-term strategies for a sustainable future in California in the world, and certainly not forgetting the millions of marginalized among us. Thank you very much.